All right. Um, let's see, where was I? Well, see, part of why I'm thinking about this too is I grew up in a redneck town. Uh, it's real small. It was like decades behind everybody else. I mean, they made us pray in school, shit like that. You know, and um, I remember a guy getting a hearing about a guy getting a boner in the men's shower room, and I heard he had to like run for his life every day. <laughs> and he's like a married guy with kids, and apparently he was thinking about something, you know, in adolescence, you know, but. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I guess some other guy got that tag on him, too, and they used to beat the shit out of the guy all the time. And he was came such a pariah. He was, like, super popular, and then some story went around about him. I don't remember what it was, but suddenly, I don't know, it's kind of sad, you know? And it was the stigma was, that's a guy. He can't be that way. I can't understand it, so it can't exist. <laughs> or shouldn't exist. <clears throat> Thanks to this. Anyway, let's read from this. Uh, it's in my blog here. All right. Yeah, it's about the ancient uh, fertility cults of the region, where uh, they had male and female ceremonial prostitutes. And there was, you know, orgies, masturbation, music, dancing intoxicating libations and who knows what else it's all part of the festivities and it was uh, part of the custom of, of the neighboring nations and the people the original inhabitants and you know a lot of the hebrews were hedging their bets doing the pascal's wager in the extreme you know because who knows who's right you know and besides their festivities sound like a lot more fun, you know, and it is about getting the crops coming in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, God's chosen people were like, a, you know, an uptight island, you know, an uptight island of prudes surrounded by a sea of pagan passion. The Israelites were often seduced away from the stodgy monotheism of Yahweh, Jehovah. They were probably hedging their bets. That's why the Bible authors called all such practices an abomination. They were losing business. And we're going to quote 1 Peter 4.3. You spent quite long enough in the past living the sort of life that Gentiles choose to live. Behaving in a debauched way giving way to your passions, drinking to excess, having wild parties and drunken orgies, and sacrilegiously worshiping false gods. Period. End of sentence. That's all one sentence. Tell me that isn't about jealous Yahweh. And let's talk about this jealousy of Yahweh's. I mean... I've always thought jealousy is, uh, isn't that kind of from an in insecurity? Why does he feel insecure? Why would he have an inferiority complex of these other gods, you know? Just because they're a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sacrilegiously worshiping false gods. Uh, Want to know what all the fuss is really about? It's about sperm. The ancients believed that a man's seed created babies and that the womb was nothing more than a nifty incubator, spilling one's seed upon the ground or in any manner unrelated to procreation was a grave sin akin, akin to infanticide, according to the Levitical law. It was also akin to paganism, which was a threat to the priests of Yahweh. Among the pagans, such an act would be deemed a special offering to the Earth Mother. 
Jacking off was the Pharaoh's sacred duty to usher in the annual flood of, flooding of the Nile. He was symbolically knocking up Mother Earth. Yahweh says, that's my job. Hands off yourself, men. It's a dirty sin deserving of death. It will also damage your optic nerves and give you hairy palms. Scary shit, friends. Monty Python said it best. Every sperm is sacred. Every sperm is great. If a sperm is wasted, God gets quite irate. <sighs> Genesis 38, 6-11. Judah took a wife for his firstborn son, Ur, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, offended Yahweh. And Yahweh killed him. Then Judah said to Onan, Take your brother's wife and do your duty as her brother-in-law to maintain your brother's line. But Onan, knowing but Onan, knowing that the line would not count as his, spilt his seed on the ground every time he slept with his brother's wife to avoid providing offspring for his brother. What he did was offensive to Yahweh, who killed him too. So, spilling your seed on the ground, the ground is the earth, the mother earth, it's sort of like doing a sacrifice to another god, isn't it? Anyway, uh, yeah, Onan sounded like a s selfish prick to me. Tamar should have put the punk in a scissor lock until he screamed, Uncle, and gave up the baby batter. More on Tamar to come. Pun intended. I mean, yeah, she could have done what Lot's daughters did, you know. Yeah, more on her to come. I imagine most harem masters of old were tolerant of any girl-on-girl -girl action going on amongst concubines. It probably made harem life more entertaining and smoothed out a lot of friction. No seed was wasted, no sin committed, matter closed. But spilling a seed really pisses God off. And that basically means we're all pagans if we've ever done that, I guess. Anyway, my apologies to any, you know, gay people or pagans for this. Just, just airing out some thoughts here. Chime in, tell me what you think. Peace, the fuck, out, and more to come. I'm not done.